I'm not ashamed. What did Moses do wrong when he struck the rock for water? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Numbers on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Numbers chapter 20. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 13. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Numbers chapter 20, beginning of verse 1. Then the children of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moses and Aaron. And the people contended with Moses and spoke, saying, If only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, that we, are, that we and our animals should die here? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly, the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and they fell on their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before they rise, and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water for them out of the rock, and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock. And he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. This was the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel contended with the Lord, and he was hallowed among them. The period of 40 years of wilderness wandering doesn't take up too many of the chapters in Numbers, because only a few notable events happened. However, as we come to chapter 20, we know that this is over, based on how the people murmured in verse 3. As they complained for water, they said they wished that they had died just as their brethren died before the Lord. Thus, when verse 1 says that the whole congregation of Israel came into the wilderness of Zin and stayed at Kadesh in the first month, we can know that this is the first month of the year when Israel started to travel at the end of the wilderness wandering. If you recall from chapter 13, Kadesh was where the children of Israel came the first time they approached the land of Canaan. I suggest from the accounts in Numbers 33 and Deuteronomy 1 and 2 that they never went far from Kadesh while wandering in the wilderness, but were not in Kadesh itself for those years. From our maps, again, we have placed Kadesh on the east side of the Jordan River in a place which borders the land of Edom, something that will become important later on in the chapter. It is at Kadesh that Miriam, Moses' sister, dies and where she is buried. By this time, Moses was about 120 years old, and Aaron, Moses' brother, was around 123 years old. Now, we know that Miriam was older than Aaron, and from our studies of Exodus, said she was probably 6 to 10 years older than Moses, meaning that Miriam likely died between the ages of 126 to 130, though we don't know for sure from scriptural sources. At Kadesh, as is so often the case, even with this younger generation of Israelites, they complained that they had no water. Irrationally, they said that they wished they had died in the wilderness, for if they did, they wouldn't be suffering this thirst. Like it was with their parents, this generation still lacked a full trust in the power of God. This generation would have been fed with manna from heaven for their entire lives. They would have seen how God had protected them, yet now, on the cusp of taking Canaan, thought that God was going to let them die for lack of water. Moses and Aaron as they have done many times before, approached God in the tabernacle of meeting with the petition of Israel for water. When the Lord appeared, God told Moses to take his rod along with Aaron and gather the children of Israel together. Moses was then to speak to the rock where he was, and it would yield water, enough for all Israel and their animals to drink. 
If this story sounds familiar, it should, for something similar happened on Israel's journey from Egypt to Sinai. In Exodus 17, verses 5 to 7, we read, And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. When this miracle happened in Exodus 17, this generation would have been children, and some wouldn't have even been born yet. God performed a similar miracle here, except instead of telling Moses to strike the rock, Moses was to speak to the rock. Why the difference? Because that's how God decided to do it. However, when Moses gathered Israel together, Moses allowed his anger to get the better of him, and in the process of scolding Israel for the rebellion, he struck the rock twice. Now, water still came out because it wasn't the children of Israel's fault that Moses didn't do what God commanded. However, God was displeased with Moses. God said that Moses didn't believe him and hallow him in front of the people. How had Moses not done this? Notice verse 10. Moses said, must we bring forth water from the rock? Before striking the rock, Moses ascribed to himself what God was going to do. If Moses had spoken to the rock as God had commanded, then nobody could say that Moses did so by his own power. A miracle would have had to have been performed by God. However, perhaps some spring of water existed behind this rock, and by Moses striking it, he released the water. Moses took the glory away from God, and in disobeying, didn't believe God's words, nor did he hallow God. His penalty? He would not lead the children of Israel into the land of Canaan. We'll have more to say on this, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord would only hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Numbers chapter 20, verses 14 to 21, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.